Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled to welcome back the wonderful Rose Williams to talk all about her latest season of Sanditon. And I wanted to start by talking a little bit about a lot of the research that you've done along the way, because obviously when you first got this role, you did a huge amount of research, you know, into the material it's, itself, into the unfinished book, into Jane Austen, where a lot of the story elements are coming from, particularly as the story's being continued for the series beyond what Jane Austen herself had written. Um, but I was actually interested in coming back into the show for a second season are you still kind of diving into elements of research because obviously the story is continuing to evolve and still taking pieces from her life so what are the aspects of research that still conti have continued to be useful even since you shot the first episode of the show yeah that's a really good question I am um, I have a I always do a folder where I put my script and then I'm quite a visual person so I like I think remember when we were talking about the power it was the power was the same process I really like pictures um so I dug out it's all up there on my shelf I'm looking at it my original Sanditon folder um where our very first director Ollie Blackburn is a history fanatic he's got a degree in history and he we had loads of back and forth conversations. He sent me loads of references. He said I should go to National Portrait Gallery. Um, made reference to Mary Wollstonecraft. Um, his pointer and my favourite Jane Austen story was always Persuasion. Um, and when it comes to series two of Sanditon, I didn't reread really it, but that was the feeling that I felt was more relevant to Charlotte this time because she's gone through emotional experience and as you said it's it's a continuation inspired by Jane Austen's work so there was that scope but when it came to research I wanted to really remind myself of that initial research um phase and I I honed in on a a painting I think it's a John Gainsborough painting of a far it looks like a farm with water um a, a country regency picture which I held in my head as a reference point for Charlotte's spirit across series one that that's where she's from she's a she loves the land this sense of freedom and the openness of that painting for whatever reason really resonated so I like reprinted out that picture um refreshed my kind of knowledge of Jane Austen but I guess the main focus was like reminding myself back of her roots where she came from and then for season two I read a bit more and listened a bit more to around the subject of Mary Wollstonecraft um it was kind of funny like she she didn't like the idea of women becoming governesses and that eventually is where Charlotte goes. So I had to kind of imagine and deviate that perspective when it came to Charlotte's journey. But I guess my two main pieces of research is, is that picture that I came back to in looking at paintings from that time and trying to feel into Wollstonecraft and also Jane Austen herself. So reminding myself of her story, feeling into her. She had a broken heart. She sadly or you know however you want to look at it died um you know she never she never got married which I think is kind of cool um so Wollstonecraft and Austin herself were the points of reference for me I also thought it was so interesting that when you first got the role that one of the things that you did as well was to go back and revisit a lot of the adaptations that have happened before not necessarily to try and mimic any of those worlds but again just the looking at the way that it could potentially influence your character and the world of Sanditon you know particularly if you're looking at Sense and Sensibility and Pride and Prejudice and and you know kind of especially now going into season two with the sibling dynamic that we're getting to see a lot more of with Charlotte's sister and so how did visiting other adaptations of Jane Austen's work help in terms of finding Charlotte as a character initially and the continued development of her? Sense and Sensibility especially for the Alice and Charlotte relationship was so such a huge reference point. Rosie Graham who plays Alice in, in this season is just so gorgeous and we really clicked and had loads of conversations about being a young woman in the world and um, relationship dynamics and pff, life. <laughs> I mean I, I'm a big sister. Rosie's a younger sister she's got a brother I think he's older than yeah he's older than her so um we talked a lot about sense and sensibility and both love the Ang Lee adaptation with um Kate Winslet and um Emma Thompson 
so that was that was a big one for me Anne Elliot was my biggest inspiration I love Sally Hawkins in the BBC film version of Persuasion that is so beautiful to me I just love that one a lot and I'm excited to see there's a movie coming out I think across the next couple of years another Persuasion adaptation which I'm looking forward to seeing so um yes those were my two those were my two kind of go-tos and then Pride and Prejudice is such a bread and butter kind of place to go <laughs> I love Jennifer Ely, Ely. I always, I always worry that I say her surname wrong. We actually worked together on a film. She's gorgeous and so kind and loving, and has a, like an Elizabeth Bennett Austin feel to her as a woman. Um, so her performance as Elizabeth Bennett again is a reference point. It also sounds like along the way, there have always been a lot of conversations about in, in creating Charlotte and shaping the show in how she can feel also very modern and fresh, but obviously existing within that time period because the show's dealing with so many conversations, so many themes, so many topics that are still completely relevant today. And so how have you approached that aspect of making her feel like a very modern woman for the time period, but still kind of understanding the, the limitations of that time period as well, you know, especially going into season two where she's taking on work as a governess, that's because there's no other options available to her. And so how does she find her own way of kind of redrawing the lines around herself within the parameters? Yeah, that, that, being it really that that was the only kind of potential means of forging some sort of path of independence was that was the only job that presented itself and I wrestled with I found that I as Rose found that hard for Charlotte because it made me feel frustrated as lovely as the experience for her was in this house with these two young women I think the freshness and the modern spirit comes through in season two, really with Augusta and Leo and Alison and Charlotte's beginning to grapple with those societal limitations in a way that she had to grapple with across season one, but being that bit older and the extra pressure from the family to get married, which is hinted upon, means that season two that fight with her future um, becomes more present and more difficult to navigate. I just think it's sad. Also, like I've said this before, the, the conversation around being a young single woman is they're still relevant. There's still, you know, there's still questions when I walk into spaces. I'm still quite young, I'm 28, but I have noticed people questioning my singleness at times or the fact that I live happily lived by myself throughout my 20s that still people kind of still wonder right or like ask it's that 2.5 kids 2.5 kids and a dog white picket fence 50s thing <laughs> it's like my point my point is is that a, obviously we've we've progressed enormously but I do think that unmarried single women in their late 20s 30s 40s and up are still questioned in certain spaces that societal pressure exists still in a different way that like there's a I think it's a TikTok or something I saw recently where is this woman's joking and she says so the first question is like oh have you got a boyfriend then oh are you gonna when are you gonna get married and then oh um when are you gonna have a kid oh when are you gonna have another one like those questions like do keep kind of coming until you do the thing that you're supposed to do and um yeah I mean I, I, I yes we've moved forward leaps and bounds but that still is a conversation in my experience and in conversation I have a couple of friends um, who are in their 40s and single one of them's got a kid one hasn't and um, you know it's I, I look up to them a lot and I love wait I just want to add one more thing to that point I'm, I've just got into this show which I'm completely obsessed with better things yes. um, oh, it's so good. Like, oh my god I'm up to date with season five it's 
spectacular watching this incredible intelligent compassionate strong single mother move through the world in her independence like oh it's so inspired me this week so yeah the themes around Charlotte and her attempt at independence is still relevant today I guess I love that. And you're absolutely right on, on all of those points. And you've also created her as a character who's incredibly observational and is always really taking in every aspect around her. For her, going to Sanditon isn't just about being somewhere new. It's about the exploration. It's about the journey of learning. You know, she's interested in the architecture of the building, the future plans for it, the business of what it's like to run a space like that for a family. And so how have you always worked to make sure that in scenes that's always coming across, even when she's not questioning things that there's always that really keen observational quality to her and that she's always really astutely paying attention to and listening to everything around her in that way yeah that's a really important that's my I guess my favorite character trait of Charlotte so at the beginning I I, I found her a li- little bit more difficult to relate to compared weirdly compared to other characters for whatever reason there's always like a kind of dance between the bit of you that connects with the character and not and I found I found it kind of weird with Charlotte like I tried to find those entry points and I guess that character trait is the piece of her which I like the most that openness and that spirit of exploration and and adventure um and I guess throughout the second season she's she's processing grief and the it that kind of wide-eyed adventurous nature has subsided a bit and lives through her younger sister um and I suppose it comes out I don't know how much this comes across in the episodes and the scenes but my intention and imagination was that that comes through her being inspired by these two young women that she's um working with as a as a governess there's a fiercely uh original individual age six slash seven who presents as a little boy and Charlotte that's a like astounding and inspiring and wonderful and confusing and brilliant and then there's a kind of witty quippy teenage brat at the beginning who I I always said I think Charlotte I don't know if this comes across, but this was just my own imagination. I wanted Charlotte to kind of feel really quite jealous isn't the right word, but inspired and um, inspired is the right word. Inspired by a young girl that has so much ferocity and passion and is unafraid to express in that way. And the fact that she reads so much and early conversations about the character of Augusta was Augusta was interested in the arts and wanted to fly off to London. That kind of didn't good to come through, but it does a bit in the way she dresses and the way she talks. But um, I suppose that exploration and that, uh, that adventurous spirit comes through in like her almost living through these two girls and learning through these two girls. It does. And, and you were bringing up there, obviously, this season, she's processing grief, but also in a very unique way where she can't necessarily talk about it with people around her, because most people didn't know about the dynamic that existed between her and Sydney at the end of the last season. And what are the challenges that come with really honoring what that relationship was to her, honoring that connection and her grief, and still kind of making it feel like he has a presence in her life without obviously being able to play to that in such a direct manner throughout the season? Yeah, that that was really important. I mean, it's kind of like it's a, it was a tough one. I th- I thought it was important for her to feel like she was grieving, and I tried my best to to play it that way. That exactly as you say, like it, she, there's a line where she says, "I he has a widow. It's not my place." When Mary says it's okay f- to grieve, and she says, "I have a widow. It's not my place," which I always <gasps> found so emotional. But um. There was actually a sit. We opened the episode. Opened and we shot Mary telling me the news, and then 
me really breaking down and crying and it was it was going to be like a Mary kind of walks me we shot it all under a tree and she says I have this terrible news and then I just like lose it and and cry um and that didn't make the cut of the episode I think I think it was so that the payoff moment was when Charlotte goes to the church and lights a candle and there's some some whiff of of closure in that moment but um yeah it was it was a tough one I just think I I felt that the most truthful thing was that like yeah she's she will be a bit a bit down she will have changed not not it's not necessarily her being like low it's more just this has this has changed and she isn't the same girl that she was last time she's been through life and she now has this emotional experience. So yeah, I tried my best just to try and think about like, I guess how she'd feel each day, but it was on my mind a lot that, yeah. I think I think his character's honored by um, his presence being felt throughout the season. And I don't think it would have been right if if he wasn't mentioned. Like, he's still very much a character. Um, and that I thought was really important. He is. And and kind of going back a little bit to season one in that relationship dynamic, it almost feels like it must be harder to play a relationship dynamic that has that really slow build, slow burn is so many unspoken moments where you really can't kind of lean into being more physically tactile with one another, with saying certain things out loud to one another. And so how did you work closely with Theo James at the time to really make sure that you were building that chemistry, building that can you know, kind of connection between the two of them without being able to rely on the way that you would if it wasn't a period piece. Yeah, that's so true. I guess, I guess it was all in the writing. Like Andrew Davies wrote the majority of series one and he's so good at what's between the line. You know, he he scripts in, looks across the room. Um, that's a big thing. He's really good at writing stage directions that say so much. Like... I remember, I think it's episode three of season one where Sydney and Charlotte bump into each other when he's with the kids. They come back to the house. Charlotte's had this idea for the regatta and he looks across the room and she's there playing with the children. And there's just this shot of Charlotte with the kids and this fond look in in Sydney's eye. And that was all crafted by Andrew. Um, So we were really lucky with the writing. Um, And just yeah working together to map out where the characters would be emotionally which is what me and Ben did it was slightly more of a challenge um with me and Ben and Tom across series two because we were filming we were double banking so two units the whole time um and really jumping between episodes so like the first scene that I shot with Ben was a scene from episode four I think the first scene I shot with um Tom again was quite far down in their journey so mapping out the emotional progression kind of as you do with tv because shooting out of order it's tricky (laughs) I also love something that you've said in terms of how you've described Charlotte as a character and that she's someone who really learns a lot about herself and, and learns about certain parts of herself through other characters and with that in mind how do you approach the way that you're then looking at other characters to think about the things that she's learning about herself when you're going through the pages of the script reading other character lines and then also when you're on set with your scene partners thinking about the things that would absorb into her as a character from spending so much time with them and learning from them yeah yeah I think that's just I mean what what a cast like supported by the most amazing cast full of talent loads of character um I mean as you just as you just mentioned like by 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 proxy by nature of being around like Anne Reed, for example who is marvelous and so clever and so funny and so sharp and so quick it's just I learn as Rose, you know, in the way that Charlotte learns from these outlandish, like mad and marvellous characters. Um, Yeah, I guess it's different to season one because it's not all so new. The newness comes from the two younger girls, Augusta and Leo. Um, I don't know what more to say on that, really. It's just I'm so blessed to work with such an amazing ensemble of, 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 
actors that play such fun characters. We had a, a fun new addition, a lovely actress, um, Sandy, who plays um, Mr. Hankins's sister, which brought in the kind of classic comedy element. Um, and I always really enjoy doing scenes with her. But yeah, I think what's nice about season two in particular is that everyone has more of an arc. It kind of spreads out, Sanderton opens up, the town itself has grown. We have big backlot set, which was our promenade. And then the audience gets to follow like different storylines. So the kind of world opens up a bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess my answer to that is just having a, as Rose and as Charlotte, I just learned so much by being around all, the, all that talent. Yeah, I think that's a perfect answer. And I was also wanting to ask about how you view her relationship with her outspokenness and, and kind of the, the slight impulsiveness that comes with that. She's not an overtly op- impulsive person, but at the beginning of the show, when she was asked her opinion about things, you know, she immediately went in and was like, here's all the things that I think and, and yeah. was very happy to say things out loud. And it feels like, you know, she's kind of learned to take a moment and a beat to step back and read the room, you know, so yeah. she still is very outspoken, but there's a little bit less impulse, uh, impulsiveness to it. And so I was interested in how you view that relationship and, and how you've really worked to tailor that based on her world experience, based on the fact that she's no longer the new person at Sanditon. She has these very deeply entrenched relationships at this point as well. Yeah, exactly. It's such a good question. I think that plays into it, the fact that she has fallen in love platonically with the Parkers and with Georgiana Lamb and is grieving. She's in a state of grief, I think, which her world has, with falling in love with Sydney and then losing him has changed. And up, it's been an upheaval inside of, of the way that she sees everything. So it's not, her spirit hasn't been dampened. As you say, she's just matured. And um, I guess sees priority in a different way. Like the the thing about Charlotte that I found hard to relate to in the world was that I didn't feel like the the stakes aren't enormous. Like when we, we were talking before about horror that I did, where it's a story about abuse, essentially, this girl the girl the 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 nurse I played in that hospital like she was about to die she was being like the stakes were so enormous and the time had so much grit to it whereas Charlotte's world her stakes this her her how can I put this like almost like the pen the pendulum of, of like darkness and light is just a bit shorter right in that world so the fact that she has experienced grief has just like lent her a bit more towards the dark so that her personality she hasn't it's not like a it, a really big she's not someone completely different but her her world just moved so she just moves differently so I really wanted her to feel different if that answers the question like it this, does. you know it really does um you know and also given that this is the first time that you've taken on a lead role in a television series and when you were working on season one you know you obviously never know when you go into the first season of a show if you're going to get picked up if you're going to have a second yeah. season and when you got picked up for season two you kind of knew that it was going to be season two and season three and did that change any of the the approach that you had in terms of the trajectory and the arc that you were creating for her as a character, knowing potentially a little bit more about further points in the journey. Because I do know that for, for season one, you were given a really kind of robust breakdown of like a little paragraph of each episode, which really helped. I love how much you research and give up. It makes me so grateful. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Oh my God, that is, you. That, you're exactly right. You've reminded me. I remember I was in LA when I got that breakdown and I sat and it actually made me cry. I think Andrew wrote it and it was a little paragraph for every episode and I cried at the ending. I thought it was really sad. Um, didn't have that this time, but did have the privilege of being able to kind of map forward and know that there was a third season. And I, it was really important to me before we started to try and ground in like a feeling of the second season, like a chapter and a feeling of the third season. And with help from our wonderful Charles Sturridge um, director, he directed the end of series seven and eight of series one and the first three eps of series two. 
um he helped me decide on series two being a transformational chapter for charlotte processing grief transforming figuring out who she is and then focusing season three on a kind of a regency version of self-actualization coming back to who she really is for me like the full circle was being inspired by that John Gainsborough picture um, at the beginning of the essence of where she's from and what she stands for and this free spirit and then wanting that to be a reference for the end of the series that she comes back to herself through all of this experience and then can move through the world like confidently in knowing who she is so yeah I was really lucky to I wouldn't have felt as um focused I don't think on the story without that knowledge so that was really great and because this is the most amount of time that you've spent with a with a singular character the most scenes that you've played with one character what's the difference in terms of the relationship that you feel like you have with Charlotte as a character against all the other characters that you've played at this point in your career it's a really good question I don't know I've always kind of there's a weird blending that I think accidentally sometimes happens when you're playing a character. I actually don't know the answer to that. I think I found... Oh, gosh, that is a really hard question. I think because Charlotte's sensibility was a bit more... As I say, like the stakes weren't as high... For example, like, I mean, my first job, I played in this CW show, Bratty Princess, like mad costumes. And it was so like extreme and overt that it was really like stepping into something and stepping out. But being in Charlotte every single day, all hours of the day, same costume, like that, taking off the costume, I didn't really have time to come back to myself. I don't know. It's a re- that's a really good question. I'm going to sit with that and think about it. I don't know. I know that she's. Do- I know that she's gone now. I think. I th- I feel like. But then I kind of I thought that at the end of series one. So you never say never. You never know. When they said that season one was cancelled, I'm like, okay, I have to say goodbye to this character and bye. And um, you never know. I, I'm I'm mumbling along because I don't really know the answer. But it was a good question. Well, we'll have to reconvene next time we we chat and, and try to figure out the answer to that one. Thank you so much for sharing all of this and congratulations on an amazing second season so far of Sanditon. Really appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. I really appreciate the lovely questions and talking with you again. Thank you.